Well, hey guys, I want to welcome you to the home of Plugmaster Ford. Uh, we don't do a lot of video from here, I usually do it from my office. I've had over the years many people ask me to show my display. And uh, it's always been hard because it's been a work in progress. And so, but I thought I would take time today to uh, go down and we will show you that. But let me show you why I have uh, problems with. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to get, I have this on a stick, so I'm trying to get it turned around here. But let me show you why it is, uh, hey, see, there's my morning breakfast drink, guayaki yerba mate. I love the revel berry. That's my favorite. Um, but the reason that it's so hard to actually show a display because it's always morphing. Um, take a look right here. And you can see this was last month or two months ago. Uh, that was my display for our club, and I've yet to put it, all this, into um, the display yet. And I see there's my sterling peanut. A lot of other things that are in there. Um, I have sterling earrings, so I have a lot of things that, that will go in this display. Three Tootsie Toys, that's a good Tootsie Toy month. And then if you look at this month, and I have not arranged this yet, but these are the finds from this month. See, there's my badge that goes on it, Jeff Ford. Um, but these are the finds from this month. And so there's those two beautiful gold rings that I found, which will eventually make their way into this display. And this display actually does set up in... Hang on, I'm going to make this selfie stick a little bit shorter so I can handle it. This display will uh, go back down into the display cabinet, which I will show you here in just a minute. But um, here's a look at you know some of the gold rings I found. I got one. Actually, that's my gold ring, so that one doesn't count. But I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Plus those two is twelve, thirteen. And I thought I had one down in here, but maybe I put it in there already. Um, this one right here was my first ever gold ring that I found. It's uh, white gold as well as uh, regular gold. So found that in a yard not far from here. Wasn't expecting it at the time as were most of these rings. Um, these are all silver. Now this Harley Davidson ring right there as you can see does have a gold uh, inlay of the Harley Davidson emblem. Uh, most all of these rings were in one uh, video. So uh, if you sort through the Plugmaster Ford videos, you will see them. I also have just some various other silver items over here. This ring up here is not silver, but this was one that was really cool. Um, we believe that to be a real ruby in there. I have not had it tested, but uh, this one was found very deep in the ocean. And uh, of course, it's, it's very old, but Holds a special place in my heart, as does most all these other things. Um, earrings, you know, sterling earrings. This one's a cool, this is a cool earring. Um, it's actually marked 925, as you can probably see right there, or sterling. Yeah, 925. Um, but it's got a dark tone, so. But it's a pretty earring, if you're into earrings. Um, anyway, some really cool stuff that we found. Here's more earrings and uh, bracelets and everything else. I have other things downstairs, which uh, I guess let's run downstairs and take a look at that. Again, it is a process all the time. Uh, you can see here I've got round balls, I've got bullets, i got you know Civil War items. Those all have yet to be put into the display, which uh, we'll do soon. This stuff is all ready to display, and this stuff will need to be displayed as well. Um, I jacket all the Mercs, um, Barbers, and everything else older than that. I jacket all of the uh, Indians, two cent pieces, and nickels. Um, I, I jack well, I tell you what, let me go grab those and we'll show you those real quick before we go down and look at the display. Okay, now I'm not sure how others display their coins. Uh, that's always been a question for me how to do that, but as you can look, I have two binders. And uh, this first binder is going to be Indians, it looks like, uh, over the years. And again, this is about a three-year collection uh, when I really started collecting. And uh, so there's pages, and 
believe it or not, they are in numerical order uh, for a year. And I move them every month when I add more. But that's why you see gaps in here, because I don't like to move every one of them every uh, <laughs> every month that I put them in. So anyway, a bunch of Indian head pennies here, and I've got more to put in. Um, as you can see, I've got a here, I've got some from last time, I've got some in this box. So it's never-ending process. I'm not complaining. Uh, I enjoy that, but sometimes I get behind. Um, here's the, let's see, I got four shield nickels and then my V nickel collection. Um, into the buffaloes uh, here. I find quite a few buffaloes. I have a lot of non date buffaloes. This whole page here is dateless buffalo nickels. And uh, so, anyway, that's how I keep those coins. Um, this, the bigger binder here is for my silver coins. And uh, I don't keep the rosy silver rosies or silver washington quarters in a binder um, they go in another place <laughs> so anyway uh here it starts and it goes again it goes oldest to newest so uh, the 1836 cat bus which i found uh, last month or two months ago um, some half dimes these are seeded up here uh, all seeded there it looks like i've got seven eight eight seeded coins uh, and one cat bus and then it goes into the barbers, and uh, and honestly, hadn't found a ton of barbers. Uh, you'd think with a lot of the places that I hunt, I would find more barber dimes, but really uh, have not. Uh, Mercs, definitely, as you can see, uh, the Mercury dimes are the ones that uh, I find the most of. And I, I've got to go through and update my app that I have on my phone. I'm not current with my finds, but Mike and I keep track of all of our finds uh, through an app on our phone called Coin Collection. Uh, for, it's available for Android. I don't believe it is for iPhone. So anyway, these are just various Mercs that I have found. Um, and again, every Merc that I, I uh I find, I put in here, with the exception of, I have one up there that I'm giving, I'm uh, going to send out to uh, someone that watches the channel, so get that going. Also want to give a shout out to Jim, who uh, I got a package the other day, um, actually yesterday, I guess it's been in there for a while, but I don't check my P.O. box as often as I should, but anyway, package in there, and um, and and Jim sent me a nice package that had a... Uh, a Model T Ford key in it, or Model A, and uh, and also 27 Tootsie toys that he had in there. So Mike and I are just starting the restoration process on Tootsie toys, so that's going to be fun. There's my War Nickel collection, which isn't a ton. Uh, these are all coins that I've dug back here, and again, everything that I collect is something that I have dug, and uh, and so uh, these are my halves up here, Franklin's. It's not counting the, you know, the hoard. Um, the hoard is a, a whole feat in itself, and that, that's got its own separate place, which I will display later. I'm just waiting for an article to come out so I can take a clipping and make a really nice display. But I've only found three SLQs over the years, um, 16, 17, 17. It doesn't look like I have found one in 2018, so uh, that gives me something to shoot for. Uh, but other various things, barber quarters, uh, here's my 1787 Spanish one real, and I'm not sure if you can see, oh, let me get on it, if you can see it, you can kind of see the crest there, that's one I did the acid treatment on, guys, that was in uh, one of my episodes on how to restore um, details off of coins like that, but a couple World War II coins brought over, uh, Australian three pence, and an Australian sixpence. Funny thing about that, they came from the same town, but about a mile and a half away yard-wise. On the back, these are various coppers and things like that. Um, there's a two-cent piece, two-cent piece. Of course, I have another one that I'm going to add. Here's my 1833 large cent, the only one I've dug. Here's a 1859 Canadian large cent, which is small in comparison. Uh, Napoleon the Third, 1856, and... Uh, and there's probably my best coin that I have found. That's my 1909 SVDB that I found while hunting with my son a couple days before Christmas. It's in beautiful condition. 
Uh, great, great detail. Does have environmental damage. No, I haven't sent it in for grading. I'm not real worried about that. And, you know, if my kids ever want to, they can send it in for grading and cash in one day. But for now, I'm happy with what I've done with it. And uh, let's go downstairs and take a look at the rest of the collection. Okay, guys, we are downstairs in uh, what we call the relic room. And I apologize, the lighting is horrible. Uh, let me, there we go, got a light for my display, so at least we'll be able to see some stuff. And uh, and again, guys, this is just stuff that I collect, stuff that I have dug that just means something to me. Uh, we all collect differently. Um, I honestly have a collection of keys. And I'm planning on putting those on a wire, and they will be strung. I have a lot more than that, but those are just the ones that I emptied out of my closet into here. So, uh, let's take a look at some of the stuff that I've collected over the last few years. Uh, there's my wheats, 2016 wheats, which was like 202, 2017, which was around 500. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Some half dollars that I dug, those are the ones that always make me mad because they're clad. Uh, just some various other things. This is a cool little chocolate spoon. Uh, dessert spoon. Here's my tags, dog tag licenses, uh, taxes, all kinds of other stuff. Um, this is my oldest one here, as hopefully you can see. That's an 1898. Hard to see in this light. Sorry, I apologize for the light. It's a work in progress, but uh, some pocket knives that I deemed worthy of the display. I have a couple more I'm going to add. Um, these are just various marbles. I haven't kept them all because my kids play with them, but these are some clay marbles and some other ones that I've dug. Junk jewelry here. Um, and again, I haven't always kept junk jewelry. I just started that kind of late. Going through here, just various things. Um, you know, pendants, jewelry, things like that. Here's a lot of watch fobs. And again, I apologize on the light. Um, and then my ring display I set back down here. Pocket watches on the back there. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks like nine. I've had more than that, but that's just uh, what I've had you know, here recently. There's my thimbles. A um, couple silver ones. Three or four, I think, silver ones. My keys. And again, I have stuff to add. Locks as well. And uh, so that's this side over here down below uh, and Mike Lyman fixed me up a little tool for holding those round balls and uh, I've, I've experimented with it upstairs I'm trying to figure out how I want to incorporate it down here but thank you again Mike um, MA Lyman 24 is his YouTube channel and I appreciate that uh, here's my military buttons and again I know the lighting is horrible I'm going to try to lighten this video a little bit so you can see them just a wee bit better some more junk jewelry, costume jewelry down there, Oxhame back there knob, um, some accordion or organ reeds. Let's see if I can get a little closer you can see it. Uh, that right there is a comb for straightening hair. There's some various buckles and things like that. Printer's plates as well. Uh, let's go up here to the top. <laughs> I collect garden hose uh, tops that I find. Um, every time I get a new one, uh, I'll add it to the collection, but we repurpose those a lot. We use them. Some compacts there as well. Here's the tokens. Um, just various tokens over the years, and uh, you see the piles back there. Those are the Missouri sales tax tokens. So um, Let's come down here to the bottom. Down here I have some displays from my Digging in Virginia. Uh, hunts. There's some various things that I found. There's my inkwell that I found. But, um, just pretty displays that I've set up. And let's take just a second and we'll come back and finish with the Tootsie Toys. Okay, and this is probably what a lot of you have wanted to see is the toy collection part. But I'm going to show you some stuff over here real quick too. Uh, again, I know the lighting's bad. I will alter that in my edit, hopefully. Um, but you can take a look at uh, you know, there's some car parts and things like that that are always neat. 
Now, not every one of these is a Tootsie toy. Um, I think, and again, uh, those of you that know, um, we did a remodel. Uh, in fact, I'm in a room that has been remodeled, and uh, and I've lost a box that had, I'm guessing, 23, 24 Tootsie toys in it. Um, so these are the ones that I have for display right now, not counting the ones that you saw up in the display and the ones that are still to come down here. Um, but let's take a look at them real quick. And again, not all of them are Tootsies. This is a gem here. Um, but most of them are Tootsie toys. And uh, you can just see the various different models. My kids get down here and mess with them every once in a while, which they're not supposed to, but you got to love them. Uh, here's my Dukes of Hazard car I kept. I really like that one. Um, but you can just see the various models and the condition that they're in. Now, I will say that uh, Mike and I are going through restoration uh, of some of these now. Mike has started more so than I have. I'm trying to research a little bit more. He's had a couple that have turned out really nice. Now, a couple of those are just Hot Wheels. They're not actually uh, Tootsies up there. But, uh, you know, you find various cars. You find, like, that train car there. And some, like, you know, this one here, I believe, is a Le No, it's not a Lessony. That is a Tootsie. Um, but Tootsie started using plastic later on. Um, this one's not a Tootsie. This one right here, these two right here are probably my oldest Tootsies. Uh, this red one here. Um, just looking through the catalog, this one is uh, an earlier model one. I uh, found two of those. Actually, I found a third. That one was toasted broke up. But here's uh, an example of a newer one with the plastic inside. You see the ambulance over there. Uh, that little sign there is a Tootsie. There's my aircraft carrier Tootsie and trailers and airplanes. Uh, not all the airplanes are Tootsie toys, but uh, they are in the same era. Uh, this big unit back here, I could never get straightened enough to identify it. I'm believing it to be a Tootsie just because of the scale on it. Um, but if I do anything else to it, it's going to break. So I'm going to leave it just like that. But anyway, that's a nice collection uh, of Tootsie toys there. I'm very proud of that collection. I love them. Uh, some of them are in fantastic shape. Some of them not so good. But hopefully, uh, Mike and I are going to be able to get our garage going, uh, our Tootsie toy garage, and be able to get them looking presentable again. Let's go back up here. I forgot some of this stuff here, my little whistle here. This was kind of cool here. I, I don't think I showed that because I didn't know what it was at the time when I found it in the video. I thought it was a button, uh, but turns out it's the side to a police whistle from 1890 or 1893. And uh, so that's a cool find. That's one of those things, and that's a great thing about our hobby is finding stuff later uh, finding out about stuff later that you realize, oh, wow, that, that was really nice. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the small tour here. Of, uh, and, again, it's a work in progress, and we will continue to add to it all the time. But I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for joining me. And, uh, as always, God bless, and get out there and dig some Tootsie Toys. Woohoo!